How is everyone? In order to get in the time constraints for today, I have to make a couple of assumptions to get us through to the, the meat of the presentation. And one is that you're all aware that there is a national childhood obesity epidemic. Probably not new to any of you. Two, that if this childhood obesity epidemic continues on its unmitigated rise, that our health care costs as a nation will continue to cripple us even more than it already does. And the third is that either through personal experience, experience that you know of others, or just what you've heard, that physical education in high school, middle school, and elementary school may not be the answer as constructed to help get students more healthy. Because it's an environment in which many are ostracized for their inability to compete at the same level as their peers. It's where they're not given choice so that they're told, play basketball. Imagine you, even one of the themes of today is kind of do unto others. If you were told that between two meetings, uh, math class and English class for students, but for us maybe a, a marketing meeting and something else, you were told to play an hour of physical activity, drip and sweat, and then get to your next meeting, it'd be something where you really needed to make sure you were motivated to be inspired by the activity that you were being pushed. So today I'm going to get into modern physical education strategies and what's different from what you may have thought of, whether you had a good experience or not. There are things that we're building into curriculum related to detailed understanding of anatomy and physiology that are really important to unlock the minds of our, our youth so that they can be consumers of health for their entire life. So if you could start the video for me, please. First slide you see is my physical activity yesterday that I did with my wife. The first is an interval-based strength training program. The second is more of a smooth run that I did with our baby carriage. I show you this because all of our students, like you see here in one of my grad programs, are all wearing Bluetooth transmitters that send their heart rate live to a hub and then live to a projector on screen so we can make inferences from it so we can guide our class appropriately. This technology is something that's part of most of my grant programs. <laughs> and my grant programs are, are one reason why I'm so passionate about this, but I'm also in the club. This is uh, our beautiful son, and my wife's in the audience right now. It is my responsibility to make sure he is excited about juggling bean bags as I am, which is the reason I still to this day juggle, or the reason I still to this day play basketball, or whatever it may be. Because I was inspired as a child to get excited about doing things like this, so they stayed a part of my life as I got older. And the way you do that is through education. What I want you to notice in this clip that I'll get quiet for is in 1991 this was aired. And think about how much different it would be if you saw it on June 4th, 2011. Difference. What works? How do you turn kids on to physical fitness in a world of limited resources and unlimited distractions? Well, one teacher has found a way in Vinton, Iowa by rethinking and by reaching out. NBC's Robert Hager. Government statistics show 40% of American kids are in physical trouble. They're overweight or have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, too much junk food and too little activity. All this is many school districts are cutting back on gym classes to save money. But not here in Benton, Iowa, population 5,000, where physical education at Tilford Middle School is being taught in a most unusual way. Keep a balance on your studies, on fitness, and on uh, your relationships with people. And with that philosophy, Beth Kirkpatrick has developed a phys ed program that stresses individual achievement over team sports Note that, and uses high-tech equipment, all on a modest budget equipment. of just $1,700 annually, the same budget as when she took the job 16 years ago. I felt that what we were doing in physical education was out of touch, that we weren't involving ourselves with technology, that we weren't attracting kids that were coming into the gym and being bored with what we had. It wasn't the right direction. This young lady is the mentor that... Uh, recruited me to a program that I started in 2006 in a small community in Iowa in which every single student every day wears a downloadable heart rate monitor to measure more objectively their physical activity. This clip is one of our middle school classes preparing for each day as they strap on their downloadable heart rate monitor. And that's the theme is that this technology can't just exist in a vacuum. The education and design of curriculum around it are the most important parts. Even that image you saw there has been changed because now we don't allow the boys and girls to go right next to each other. We spread the monitors out so that they're able to separate themselves from any temptation they may have to be knuckleheads. Our graduate students. <laughs> Our graduate students each day are responsible for downloading this data and making inferences from it so that they're also evaluated as well. So our students are required to get 30 minutes in their target heart rate zone each day in each lesson, but our teachers are, are required to create environments that allow them to get at least 75% of those students to get their required physical activity. I show that clip again too so you can think of ways that we could even use that data while live to make sure students weren't overstimulated or under. 
This is an image we have of rollerblading, a classic example of more modern physical education, in which we're not just showing them how to rollerblade, we're making them proficient in skills. We don't move to the next level until all of our students master the basic competency of the skills. And then reaching out to parents with activities that gets them back engaged with their physical education program. There are a lot of parents that you wouldn't expect that may have been dominating the roller skating rink in 1984 that you'll get back out for programs like this. Uh, body weight conditioning is a big theme of a lot of my personal lessons. So that whether or not you have a beautiful gym like I have at a lot of my grant based programs or not, you're able to utilize a lot of the same things that you were given by birth to get a fully competent strength training workout each day that builds on itself so that all of my students understand how to take that home, articulate it to their parents about what we're doing so that you're able to get, again, parent engagement so the entire community is involved in this project. And all these buzzwords that you're going to hear me say, I know you've heard before, community engagement, top-down top buy-in, but what really is important is that you do things like this, that you teach students and adults activities that you would do yourself. Uh, one of the biggest problems with most physical education programs is they're still spending the first 10 minutes of class stretching, uh, static stretching, whereas all NFL and NBA programs, some of which I've worked with in the past, use dynamic stretching, which is movement-based. So all joint acts and speeds and angles are introduced in the movement and then evaluated with new equipment. All of us have done the sit and reach box where you touch a point to measure your flexibility. But the biggest problem with that is limb length and, and time of year would make it so that your results are completely inaccurate. So new equipment like this allows it to measure start and stop position on a pretty inexpensive computer program that allows us to get accurate measurements of flexibility beyond just obesity measurements. Core training, a big piece of a lot of physical education programs now is that they want to measure core strength. But what so often is they'll say, they'll test at the beginning of the year, they'll test at the end of the year, and never is physical activity or core strength mentioned in between. Every one of our students from middle school on get 10 minutes each day dedicated to core training, which sounds like a lot of time, especially for maybe some of you that are teachers, saying we are already in a crunch for schedule, but there are ways to eliminate some of the fluff like static stretching in order to incorporate different themed elements of core training so that when they go to do ab training, they have 17 different workouts they can pull from in order to continue to challenge themselves and have fun as they go through it. So what I'm doing here is a medicine ball workout that we start with in seventh grade that has different developmental elements that we introduce each year all the way up to the top. This is a scene that I want you to start to realize this is what our high school physical education gym looks like. And while this may look impressive, the way we're able to do it is completely budget neutral is team up with groups like the local YMCA. This gym is available to our students during the day and then is sold as a membership-based service to the community members at night. So again, tying the town together, allowing us to use equipment we wouldn't have had access to, and also teaching students different elements to do on a treadmill than just run straight ahead. You, they're going to eventually find themselves to feel like hamsters on a wheel if you don't start to show different elements. And this is something being shown by an athletic 17-year-old boy, but it's taught to seventh grade males and females as start of a progressive curriculum that gets them to the point where they're doing this. Dance Dance Revolution. If you have not done Dance Dance Revolution before, it is highly addicting, but it is extremely difficult at first. And Exergaming is dominating grants that I work with all across the country. What unfortunately happens so often they dump them in schools and the kids that are already using them at home get good at them and those students like those that would have never used them to begin with never do. So we have the same idea as we do with everything, whether it's basketball or DDR, there are levels at which they have to achieve in order to be competent at Dance Dance Revolution. Rowers, another piece of equipment that is dominating physical education programs. About a fifth as expensive as treadmills, so you're able to use a lot more of them and get them for your money. But these students are a demonstration of what happens on day one in terms of enthusiasm as Ms. Parsons comes around and says, hey, pay attention to your heart rate. Pay attention to these elements, but none of them do. And they'll get bored and injuries will happen unless you break it down and do the same thing again you would have done and that most PE teachers are good at, breaking down skills for basketball and baseball. You do the same thing for rowing. You have visual examples up on the wall. You have them certified at each level the way their form is designed so that they're able to be perfect before being released into the world of high school physical education where they're responsible for making their own program, which is something I'll get into in a second. So this is the way that we're taking traditional elements of physical education and moving them forward. Even boxing, things that maybe have been taboo in most of your school districts are now being utilized in new ways with contract-based programs. His mom was standing behind me. And this leads to my last little element that gets everybody excited, 
When I went to my elementary school program the first day and I told them we're going to be talking about dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and pronation and supination, I got an equal number, if you could turn it up a little bit, of nose picking and completely disinterested students. And I asked them what would make them engaged in learning. They said if I sang to them. So I went to the lab and came up with this little way of teaching third grade students muscles and joint actions of the body. So follow along and if you need to see the word, it's up on there too. Muscles and joint actions for third grade students. Here we go. So it's M-U-S-C-L-E, you learn those muscles if you rap with me. On the front of your arm is where you'll find your bicep, but the back of your arm, find your tricep. A bicep flexion lets you touch your nose, tricep extension, touch your toes. I said right above your hips, but below your chest, your ex abdominis helps you with your sit-up test. Ask any ballerina and I bet she knows. Your gastrocnemius help you get up on your toes. Now that same ballerina that's up on her toes, plantar flexion allowed her to go. Now dorsiflexion is when you point your toes to the heaven. Tibia two, toes at 11. Abduction's the process away from the body, but remember when you kick not to hurt nobody. Huh? Adduction brings you back in line. If you think of closing scissors, you'll do just fine. Pronation's the process when your palm is down. Think of chilling in the cup and rolling through town. But when you roll your palm up, you supinate. Same basic principle as holding a plate. Now, using your muscles helps to keep you strong, so keep yourself healthy and you can't go wrong. Boom. <laughs> so then, so then, ladies and gentlemen, You've got them engaged, and then it's your opportunity to have them and keep them engaged and show them new elements that will keep them excited. But if they know that by third grade, you've got a lot of doors unlocked to make them successful in life. So thank you very much for your time, David.